Wow. I'm getting really technical today, folks. I am went to my YouTube app and I started recording from the app. So hopefully it doesn't take as long to upload. You all don't care, but I feel like I should tell you anyway. Today, we are focusing on West Africa with the blue circle around it. Uh, we will learn about three empires, West Africa, Ghana. In, in West Africa, we'll have Ghana, Mali, and then Shanghai. we will talk about probably more later in the week. Uh, the first one we'll talk about Ghana is going to be very short, like your... Hold on just a second. Oh, oh, come on. It's too early to have that happen. Where's my mouse? I'm back. Don't worry. Don't worry. But look what else I can do with this. Hello. There's Josephine behind me. So, Ghana, all right, Empire of Ghana, West Africa, you have, this is the area, Empire of Ghana, we're talking about, read textbook page 130 to 131, we'll tell you a little bit more, uh, notes, I will put these on play, pause it, Ghana was located between mines of gold and mines of salt, Stuff is pretty valuable today, really valuable back then, okay? All right, Ghana grew rich by, and powerful by taxing traders in the gold and salt trade. As Ghana grew in power and popularity, trans-Saharan trade with Middle East began. Now, go back to your vocab from yesterday, trans-Saharan. That means we're going across the Sahara. You have gold and you have salt. So we are going across uh, the Middle East. All right. So moving on, Middle East traders come and get the gold, get the salt. This will also lead to diffusion of Islam. What is diffusion? Somebody in Stinger tell me what diffusion is. Spreading out. Spreading out. So what is being spread out? The Islam, the Islam religion, all right? So this is spreading of diffusion. Tell Mr. Picklesheimer that uh, he gets a live school point. Moving on. All right, so just, just, just for this PowerPoint, if we describe the trans-Saharan trade route, what made Ghana a powerful empire? And I'll have this on play pause. And how does the primary source below explain how Ghana's location helped make it a rich and powerful empire? All right. So the king of Ghana exacts the right of one diner of gold on each donkey load of salt that enters his country and two diners of gold on each load of salt that goes out. So this is from Ghana in 1067. What is making them money? What is making them rich and powerful? Clearly, if someone is charging for a donkey load of salt and a donkey load of gold, that's making a lot of money. All right, so moving on to Mali. Talk about with Molly. All right, 7A, help me say this G word. Griots. Griots. All right, Griots. Learn to, these are very influential people uh, in Mali at the time. They learned to memorize events, songs, and dances, which transmitted, passed on the history of families, families villages, and kingdoms. All right, so they are a storyteller. They know everything that is going on in the tribe and can tell stories of events and folk tales that might have faded from popular memory. So this is kind of like your grandpa or that old crazy uncle at the family reunion. You know who I'm talking about, right? So historian, a griot can remember and seeing seven generations worth of a tribe's family history and in some areas can be completely familiar with the songs of a ritual. A cultural musician, accomplished musicians, griots, orchestrate a circle of music and dance which draws in audience members until they become performers, creating a community experience. 
Uh, just how important is the griot's role in African society? Any West African celebration or special occasion is incomplete without a griot's participation, even now. So this is something they still use today. All right. Griots use story songs and dances to communicate the history of culture of families. And I'll put these notes in play positive uh, of the tribe. All right. So again, not only are storytellers, but also entertainers, and they are also at all the big time events. So just like family reunions, that's the only time you see your old crazy uncle. All right, a story of the history of the Mali's empire. A long time ago, King, now you all pay attention to this, folks, okay? Because this, this will get emotional, all right, if you know where I'm going. King Magan ruled the kingdom of Mali. He was loved by his people and had many wives. One day, a hunter came from far away to visit the king. The hunter asked him to marry a woman called Sagalon. King Magan demanded, Why should I marry a woman I do not know just because, uh, just because a stranger had told me to? The hunter told him that Sagalon would bear him a son who will become the greatest king to ever rule the kingdom. Like most Malians, the man believed in fate and destiny, and he listened to the advice of the hunter. Even though Sagalon was very ugly, the man married her, and she gave birth to a son. He was named Sandiata. But as the boy grew older, they realized that he couldn't use his legs. King Magan became very sick when Sandiata was still a young boy, knowing his days were numbered. The king called Sandiata to his bedside, telling his son, When I go... You will be my king. You are destined for greatness, my boy. But after King Magan died, the king's first wife, wife Sassam, whoa, Sassamal, believed that her son, Dankerin, should be king. Well, what a dank. All right, Sassamal spread tales about Sundiata around the kingdom, you know, talking that stuff, so people wouldn't accept him. The gossip worked. And Dacaron became king instead. Sundiata was forced to flee with his mother. Living far away in a foreign land, Sagalon became very unhappy. She said to her son, Sundiata, you must know that I love you dearly, but I'm worried about your future. You're a strong boy and have a great heart, but your legs have allowed Sasama to take control. We cannot let Dankaran be king. It's against your father's wishes. Maybe this is sounding familiar to you, maybe not. Sundiata felt sad, but he had great courage and determination. Using two iron rods from a blacksmith, Sundiata used all his strength to pull himself up. Gradually, his legs started to grow, and within minutes, he was standing on his own two feet. He told the gathering crowd, now I'm ready to be king. The young Sundiata grew into a man and became famous for his strength and charm. He had many admirers. In the meantime, Sassama and Dankaran had lost control of the kingdom to a wicked wizard called Sungamaru. An old friend called Bale Fasik told Sandiata how Sungamaru had magical powers over the people of Mali and how he had even displayed the skins and skulls of his enemies and his treasurers in his chamber. Sandiata was determined to go back and free his people of the terrible wizard. Baal Fazik gave him a special arrow that would make Sangamaru lose his evil magic if scratched by the arrow. Trusting his own friends, Sundiata set off to fight Sangamaru, joined by hundreds of his friends and supporters. There was a long and fierce battle, but Sundiata's determination and patience paid off. Sangamaru was wounded by the arrow and lost all of his power. The wizard fled, never to be seen again. Sundiata was a finally crowned king. And his adoring people called him the king, long king of Mali because his strength and courage. Sundiata's reign was a long and happy one, and he became the greatest king to ever rule the kingdom of Mali. Does this story sound familiar? Read page 131, The Rise of Mali. Hint, Sundiata was known as the Lion King. View the video about Sundiata and try not to cry. It's so good, which you all might not find it that emotional because you didn't grow up in the 90s, but back in the 90s, you have a couple of hit movies, key movies. You have Toy Story, Lion King. I mean, those two are absolutely iconic, okay? Maybe if you're a female, some other ones are important, but you're talking about Lion King here, okay? And this video that you're about to watch will show you more of what I'm talking about. 
All right, so Molly rose to power as Ghana weakened. Bye, Ghana. Hello, Molly. Sundiata Kita united the people of Mali. He established the king of Mali. He extended its territory, conquered gold mines in the west, and two large trading cities, Timbuktu and Janae. All right, so conclusion. Who established the kingdom of Mali? Sundiata. Name a trading city that Sundiata took control of as he extended Mali's territory. Timbuktu and Janae. How is the history communicated to future generations of Africans? Through Griot's oral history. All righty, folks. So that is all for today. I will add the questions and notes to the play posit. Hope everyone has a great Thursday slash Friday, whichever year you're using this.